Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. And today what I want to talk about is the New York Giants leadership this year. What is it going to look like? But first of all, we are at 695 subscribers. Let's get a 700 because I have an episode of BNA Sports Podcast right ripe and ready for you guys to watch. But yeah, let's get right into the video. I want to talk about the leadership with the New York Giants because there have been a lot of things going around. And I remember when I was in cross country, it's a little bit of an anecdote, but my senior year was just like, who's going to be captain? It's going to be this person. It's going to be this person. Is the oldest? Is the, you know, captains make it becomes clear who's going to be captain. I'm going to talk about different players on this team. And obviously, I'm not qualified. I am not part of the Giants locker room. But this is kind of like an outside perspective viewing in based on from what I've read from different reports and things like that and how I think the leadership dynamic will and should work this year. So, first of all, Daniel Jones, he's really taken a step up, especially at the end of last year. He's a leader. He's kind of like Eli Manning in the fact that he's not a rah-rah guy. But from what I've heard, some stories just like, you know, he he motivates guys. You see him on the sideline versus the Buccaneers. It's just that the unfortunate thing is that he didn't win a lot last year. And when you win, you know, teammates come up to you right away. Even if you're not the best leader itself, you know, team, uh, teammates are more willing to accept you. Because it's like, oh, this, all this guy does is win. That's why Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes, those guys have gotten a lot of cachet. But eventually it gets to you. Um, yeah, so Daniel Jones towards the end of last year, he really took up a leadership role because when it was clear, it was his job. Eli Manning was done, especially after the Miami game. It's just like he threw three interceptions, even though they won. It's just like, oh, this is Daniel Jones' locker room. He's able to communicate with guys. His big thing, he said, is just like, this is not my team, this is our team. And that's very useful, especially with a lot of young guys on this team. It's not like, oh, the older players... You know, we're going to have them, you know, deliberate and basically say what we're all doing. You know, you still need experience. You still need James Bradbury to be a little bit of teachers. But Joe Judd said, you know, he's going to be the teacher. He's the reason why that we have coaches. And uh, over the past couple of years, we've had bad coaches. That's why these guys didn't get hired. They weren't great teachers. We try to bring in an Antoine Bethea, you know, who didn't really work out as far as, you know, skill wise. Was he utilized 100% correctly? Maybe not. But still, you know, we had Al Gogoltree, a bunch of old veteran leaders. Now we're younger. You know, we still have, we have older guys. We still have like Leonard Williams, Alex Tanney and Colt McCoy are older. I think they'll just, their, their role is basically just to serve, you know, teaching Daniel Jones the offense, make sure everything's on the up and up. But eventually, you know, Daniel Jones is going to be past the reins and there's going to be a young guy behind him and Daniel Jones is going to be the number one guy. Basically, my thoughts are all like hobble jobble right now. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, you know, Daniel Jones with the Black Lives Matter, he's with, he's one with the team. We saw that with Drew Locke a lot, you know, his teammates like him. He he's a get it guy. He understands. Um, Aaron Rodgers. A lot of people saw through it. He you know says something about Black Lives Matter, and then you know Martellus Bennett calls him out. Nobody's calling out Daniel Jones. Chris Sims really does like him, and there's a reason why a lot of people come behind him. You saw that burst in talent. You know the the be all and end all is. Remember that I think it was either like the first or second day of practice. You see Daniel Jones break out for a run in practice. You know they're not in pads and things like that. You know it's not like you know full. You know, it's not full pads. But he breaks out for a long run. You could tell the teammates were genuinely excited how he was running. It's just like, whoa. At the end of uh, the 2018 season, a lot of the Giants players are just like, oh, Eli's coming back. There was no motivation. There was no like upside. It's just like, oh, Eli Manning, he might be, you know, returned to glory. But, you know, he's still inaccurate. But Daniel Jones, his only upside, he's showing that, you know, he's going to put on weight. He's going to gain some weight. He's going to fix a fumbling issue. And as far as other leaders on this team, I think Saquon Barkley should take a little bit of a step back, believe it or not, because, you know, running backs on teams that are successful, you know, they don't really take leadership roles. You know, obviously, you know, have the running backs, you know, top running backs that get paid, don't really, you know, uh, make the Super Bowl and things like that. It's not just because of that. Adrian Peterson was like with Brett Favre and things like that, who had a different leadership role. There's not really a running back that you can say. You can pick out so, you know, some of them like Terrell Davis, maybe a Barry Sanders. But again, were those teams really you know that successful? I get it with Terrell Davis. But, you know, LT, you know, teams with, with leaderships at uh, running back. You know, the running back is just supposed to inspire confidence. He's supposed to be a bell cow. He leads by example. I think guys like Saquon Barkley should lead by example. Last year, he tried to take that Odell Beckham Jr. route. Him and Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams did that in 2017 when he was with the Jets. It's just like he tried to take that uh, Odell Beckham, like learning how to be a leader. No, leaders are born and they're made by experience and just by natural. You can't force a leader. And that's going back to my cross country example. You cannot force a leader. And Saquon Barkley, he was kind of forced to be a leader just because he was the number two overall pick. No, leaders are made based on experience, based on what you do. I think Saquon Barkley should take a little bit of a step back. 
I do think he's going to rebound this year, but not by much because he's not so much of a like in between the tackles running back. So I think that Daniel Jones, if he improves this year, he's going to be able to take a you know I beat the word leadership, but he's going to be able to take a leadership role this year. As far as other guys, you know Andrew Thomas is young. As as far as that offensive line unit, I think it's going to be more of a coaching and more of a teaching thing. I think our offensive line coach uh, Mark Colombo is really just going to be a teacher. There's not really going to be a leader on the offensive line. You may have an Andrew Thomas develop into a leader later, but you know Nate Solder maybe. But yeah, I'm not too sure about that. And then uh, as far as our defense, you have Blake Martinez that I think will fit more into a you know teaching the defense the Patrick Graham route, but teaching him his expectations based on you know based on the New England expectations things like that even though Blake Martinez didn't play for New England you know Nate Ebner is going to be a little bit of a leader kind of facilitating you know the transition so I guess Deion Lewis as well those aren't going to be like great leaders but Blake Martinez basically you know saying this is what the expectations are for the defense he knows his expectations I think he the best thing to do is like stay in his own lane again Leonard Williams should kind of stay in his own lane maybe Daniel Jones eventually will work that C on his you know on his uniform but you know, you have to win. You have, you have to start winning. You can't just be named captain. Uh, Derek Jeter it took a couple of years for him to actually be named captain, even though everyone knew he was pretty much captain. Uh, as far as any other leaders, James Bradbury, maybe. Uh, I'm not too sure. Like, at some point, you have to, you know, just play. You have to just play. Jabril Peppers apparently was developing into a leader last year. He's one of the oldest guys on the team on the defensive side. Um, so he may he might do a little bit of that. Uh, teach Xavier McKinney. But he doesn't know the scheme. And yeah, so Jabril Peppers, just just play, just stay healthy. And Evan Ingram, you gotta stay healthy. You gotta be on the field. That's that's the guy that I expect most to just, you know, just play. You know, don't worry about being a leader. Don't worry about that fifth year option. Well, worry about it because you may not be playing in two years for the New York Giants or any team if you, you know, can't stay healthy and you can't consistently produce on the field. I don't want to hear anything. You know, we have Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and those guys are going to be reliable for Daniel Jones. They're going to be able to, you know, facilitate Benjamin Victor a little bit, but leave it to the coaches. Don't try to be come up and be oh, this leader and whatever. Just just go out and play. I don't want to hear anything from Evan Ingram talking about leadership. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know you guys think. Did I miss any names about people who then develop into leaders? Do you disagree with my Saquon Barkley point? I think that, you know, it's just too many chefs in the kitchen, too many leaders could be a bad thing. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.